A very good Friday evening to you, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is September 11th, and welcome to the SVG TV News and Sports. I am Khalil Cato with the details. Increased investments in agriculture and improved relationships between buyers and sellers are two factors which this country's Minister of Agriculture, Saboto Caesar, believes will help to reduce the sub-region's food import bill and improve productivity and production. Minister Caesar's comments came during a virtual discussion program hosted by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank addressing the topic pandemic and food security. The OECS subregion currently has a food import bill of $1.6 billion, an issue which threatens food security. Highlighting some of the ideas which he believes can put a dent in the food import bill, Minister Caesar said new technology will make agriculture more attractive to the youth while making it more efficient. Locally, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have been doing excellent work as it pertains to our quest to expand the agriculture sector. Of course, we have a, a population whereby the labor force, there's a competition in the labor force as to whether persons will go into the, the service sector or persons will go into agriculture. What we are seeing of late, however, is that when you invest in technology, it reduces the level of persons who want to go into the services sector when you increase the technology in agriculture. So when you have greenhouse parks, young persons who hitherto would say, I, I don't want to do the traditional type of farming, <laughs> they will be first to come to work at a greenhouse park. Mm -hmm. So here is where we see an injection in technology will definitely cause a revolution in terms of the number of persons within our labor force who will be willing to go into agriculture. The agriculture minister said there must be a, un a unified approach taken by the subregion to tackle the staggering food import bill. He said the development of relationships within the subregion will assist in this regard. A man from Grenville by the name of Joe Jack would get on a boat, come to St. Vincent with, with turmeric, nutmegs, and allspice, bay leaf. And what he takes down, he takes down cattle, he takes down pigs, he takes down sheep and goats. And he does that five times per year. So much so he's one of the most popular buyers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And there are persons in St. Vincent and the Grenadines who have now established a relationship with persons in Grenada. So as we look at advancing the agriculture sector, and as a policymaker, as I look towards 2025 and to 2030, I don't want us to be pessimistic and think that the exponential increase in the food import bill is because people do not want to farm. I want to put it squarely at the fact that we do not have enough relationships within the sub-region between buyers and sellers. And if we can create a platform, which we are working on through the OECS Secretariat, whereby buyers and sellers can have a, a meeting place, we are going to be able to increase trade in different commodities and that is going to significantly close the door on many of the commodities that we import from outside of the subregion. Minister Caesar said each country within the subregion is blessed in different areas and region wide diversification is the way to go. Right here in the subregion. You speak about the issue of tomatoes, pumpkins, watermelons. We all have it in the subregion and the issue of maritime transportation that is affordable and is regular is another issue that we definitely have to address. But in a nutshell, as a policymaker, I am going straight to the issue of the 1.6 million billion Eastern Caribbean dollars, which if we have circulating in our rural communities, will fill that gap that once was occupied by banana production from a monocropping standpoint. What we're going to have is a more diversified production platform. We'll be producing many different commodities. 
and we will be trading increasingly within the sub-region. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez says a lot of assistance has been given to local farmers since the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking on NBC Radio earlier this week, PM Gonzalez said, for, said farmers have been able to buy fertilizers at half price, receive animals and seedlings, and their crops are being purchased for the Love Box initiative. He said additionally, some farmers have already been approved to receive financial assistance under the COVID-19 and drought benefit program. Well, you haven't got the fertilizer, but if you get, if you get fertilizer, you're getting it $32 for $32.50 as a hundred pound sack, which is a big subsidy. They take our five dollars first, and then we pay the other. We pay half, thirty-two fifty. So we ourselves, the government that is paying that, we giving out free seeds, we giving out calves, piglets, but sheep, gonna, goat, uh, not a lot of that. Then they are paying good prices for the love boxes. They have done twelve thousand love boxes, and farmers making a good living off of those. Lots of. Lots of um, assistance which has been given to farmers and this, this particular money. I, we approved last week, the, the week before. Opposition MP for the Southern Grenadines, Terence Oliver, says that the government has stopped short in providing employment opportunities for the youth in the Grenadines and across SVG. Speaking at the NDP's virtual meeting last evening, Oliver said a lot of the youth in his constituency and elsewhere are on the block with not much to do. Look at that now, our, oh, uh, you know, it's amazing. When I walk to my constituency and I show you have the same experience, our young people sitting on the block. You heard what Mr. Wiley had said to you. They will say they finished secondary school, they had such a amount of subjects. They finished college, they have the, the, um, the, 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 whatever they did, they have their passes in that. But what are our young people doing? But you know what is ironic? I don't know if you notice it. But in the Grenadines, there are people coming from all over the world. I don't blame them for coming. But they are working. But what are our young people doing? They are sitting down on the block. Because you know why? They don't, some of, some of them don't have the little certificate to say, I am certified in this. Okay. The Southern Grenadines MP said the secondary school dropout rate is very high and that the government has not done much to find a solution to the problem. The dropout rate from secondary school so high. Even before they reached Form 3, you heard the report that kid, um, Mrs. Bacchus played just now, Bacchus Batiste played just now. 90 go in by... Um, by, by the end of the five years, 30 graduate. And it's not that they can't make it. The curriculum did not change to cater to varied ability students. Curriculum made it mandatory that skills be taught in schools. You can, be, you can get a CVQ at two levels, whatever skill it is, whether plumbing, mechanic, what you want to do, scuba diving, whatever it is. But you have to make sure the criteria is set up and added to that, when you set up the criteria and you teach them in school, you also have on-the-job training. And NDP candidate for West St. George, Kay Bacchus Batiste, has put together a document of her plans for the constituency, which includes job creation and the hosting of an annual exhibition to showcase products from the agriculture and cottage industries. With a view to expand the job creation within these sectors, Loans from the Development Bank will help small businesses from every sector to grow so that they can employ more local people and will allow them to benefit from business advice to give them the best chance of success. My plan for job creation in Western George will see no one left behind. To this extent, I have started a database recording names and addresses and contact numbers of persons who are unemployed and are seeking jobs. And I have already placed about five persons in the construction industry from that database. And we intend to continue that database. So if persons want a plumber, a musician, a farmer, an electrician, uh, uh, whatever, 
we will have a database so that you can call and you can be placed. At least 60 youth, that should be 60 youngsters in the West St. George constituency have benefited from the government's Promoting Youth Micro Enterprises Prime program. Speaking at a recently held meeting of the Unity Labour Party at the Daphne Community Centre, the ULP's candidate for the constituency, Curtis King, highlighted some of the developments which took place in the constituency under the ULP administration and some of his plans, once in office, which will include more opportunities in education. The RSVG police force is investigating a motor vehicle accident at Casson Hill this afternoon in which several vehicles were damaged. According to an eyewitness report, a red coaster bus HD520 carrying the name Nepi was heading towards Arnisvale when it appeared to have lost its brakes, causing it to smash into several vehicles before coming to a stop. At least 10 vehicles were reportedly, that should be 10 vehicles reportedly received slight to extensive damage. Other reports say at least two children were taken to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. Their injuries are, however, at this time not known. Richmond Vale Academy wins another Energy Globe Award. Award. This and other stories coming up when we return with more local news. Welcome back. A 10-year project aimed at bringing people together to identify and undertake concrete climate change adaptation projects has won the Richmond Vale Academy, the RVA, an Energy Globe Award, its third since 2016. The Energy Compliance Project, won by the institution, was executed under the RVA's St. Vincent Climate Compliance Conference 2012-2021. The conference is being conducted taking into account SVG's vulnerability to all major types of natural hazards, which include floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions. The overall objective of the Energy Compliance Project is to be 90% self-sustainable in the production and use of renewable energy by 2021. Director of the Richmond Vale Academy, Stina Herberg, welcomed the award and was quoting at and was quoted as saying, the project and resulting award shows what can be achieved when we approach climate change response with a long-term objective in mind. She said it is their hope that the success of the Richmond Vale Academy in the execution of this project and the prestige associated with the award will inspire other organizations and entities locally and regionally and around the world to explore ways of reducing their impact on the natural environment. Herberg also expressed appreciation to the entities and individuals who assisted in the execution and upkeep of the project. Two young, talented Vincentian entrepreneurs have created an app called PaySwift, which makes it easier for persons to transfer and receive cash from across the OECS region. PaySwift was invented in 2013 by Jamal Glasgow and Marlo Brown and was officially launched in April this year. Brown explained to SVG TV News why the app was created and what they are hoping to achieve. Okay, so PaySwift was officially developed to help small businesses and help 
the Vincentian public be more adaptive to the online space. So PaySwift, like I said before, allows payment gateways. It's a digital payment. Everything right now, we realize that a lot of persons are now walking around with a smartphone. So pretty much PaySwift is a smartphone wallet, right? It's an e-wallet system that allows persons to pay for goods and services. Of course, um, our official target market was actually the younger generations, but we now realize that um, middle age as well as upper age persons or senior citizens are even taking a very good swift uh, hit at the piss with application they're actually starting to enjoy it persons from various diaspora uh, around the OECS countries as well also from persons in the US Trinidad Canada are now taking up the usage of piss with and using it to send money to their friends and family the youngsters have also created a kiosk and they say they are hoping they are working to step up several of these across the country to, to give persons easy access to send and receive money. The youngsters have also created a kiosk and they say they are hoping they are working to step up several of these across the country to, to give persons easy access to send and receive money. Uh, payment solution for recharging your piece of account right and this kiosk is going to be placed strategically across in Vincent and Grenadines and it's going to allow users to actually put physical cash into this machine and recharge their piece of account so the PaySwift app is free to install into your Android or iOS phone all you have to do is visit your look your app store on your mobile phone install the app and register and you can have a free piece of account that is set up and ready to receive payments or send payments locally and abroad. Anybody can sign up for it, but when you want to receive your cash, you have to have an ID card to receive your cash. So when you have your PISF account set up and installed, you can actually receive cash to your PISF account by sending what we call a payment link. And most of us already have WhatsApp, we communicate through WhatsApp. So you may be to use your PISF account, send a payment link generated from PaySwift to that person in WhatsApp. They can use PayPal, credit debit card, MasterCard, Visa card, etc. to then make that payment to your PISF of account. You will see that transaction showing up on your mobile phone and then you can then choose to withdraw that in cash at our office here or you can actually transfer that to your bank account or credit union account for the application itself. The traffic branch of the RSVG police force now has two new motorcycles to patrol the roads of SVG thereby ensuring safety on the public thoroughfares. On Thursday, resident ambassador, resident Taiwanese ambassador, His Excellency Calvin C.H. Ho, handed over two white Yamaha 900cc motorcycles to Commissioner of Police Colin John at the police headquarters. The motorcycles were manufactured in 2020. This donation complements the fleet of motor vehicles which the Republic of China and Taiwan handed to the force on July 16, 2020 during the official visit to SVG by President of Taiwan, Her Excellency Tsai Ing Wen. And also on Thursday, Commissioner of Police Colin John presented a framed copy of the newly released official logo of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Unit, ATP, ATIPU, to retired Superintendent of Police, Ruth Jacobs. In making the presentation, Commissioner John commended Jacobs for her years of service to the RSVG Police Force and the people of SVG. He told Jacobs that being the first person to head the ATIPU, it was only fitting that she be the first recipient of a copy of the unit's logo. In her response to the presentation, Jacobs thanked the commissioner for his decision to recognize her in such a way. She said, also, she said although she has retired from the organization, she still feels closely connected to it and wished the commissioner and the rank and file of officers success in their quest to make SVG a safer place. Jacobs retired from the force in 2017 as the officer in charge of both the Criminal Invest Investigations Department and the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Unit. She was succeeded by SOP Francis and ASP Simmons, respectively.